as I start recording this video, <coughs> uh, we're the 6th of, of April 2023 and uh, this is supposed to be the fourth part of a series of videos on home economics, how to make home economics great again. In order to secure a free uh, society, to secure liberty actually, There can be no liberty without order, and there can be no order without self-discipline. Yeah, so uh, I've been recording videos about home economics for three days in a, in a row now, and that's the fourth video. Uh, I, uh, I wrote a few thoughts, so I will begin with a an introduction. Uh, it's not a rigorously uh, planned, but I had I wrote down a few thoughts uh, earlier this afternoon, and uh, yeah. So the the kind of books, uh, my new method of communication. Now, if if you are bored uh, for by by watching long video, you just look at the message uh, on on the close. That's my new way of communicating. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm not just a, a white trash wearing a, a t-shirts with messages. I back this up with, with a theoretical aspect. These are really two great books which explain why inflation is, is theft. And uh, yeah. And Ron Paul explains this as well, and the Mises Institute. And uh, here a little bit of virtue signaling. I, I sent a donation a few days ago to the Ron Paul Institute. Uh, like I've already done this many times over the past few months, and a few times for the Mises Institute as well. I encourage you to send donations to the Ron Paul Institute. Uh, he has consistently struggled for peace and prosperity, not only the peace and, and prosperity and liberty of Americans, but the world at large, because his ideas are universal. Yeah. So, uh, now that the topic of inflation has been addressed, So, uh, my introduction. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the totality of, of word knowledge The totality of word knowledge um, is accessible and is made available on the internet. Videos, websites, uh, podcasts, books, articles, etc. etc. And what I provide uh, in a lot of my videos is simply the, 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 the formal structure, not only, but I also provide the formal structure of the totality of, of knowledge, everything, uh, yeah, to, to help clarify and, and to help think more rigorously and to find more order in a, an ocean of information which can be overwhelming sometimes, so I try to provide order, yeah. I wrote, uh, restoring order begins with the individual, but that's what I believe. And it consists in trying to order one's own mind, one's own soul, and one's own body, which means logic, or the ordering of the mind, psychology for the ordering of the soul, and, and health for the or ordering of the body. They are kind of connected. Uh, and that's why I've been working on, on a singular level for... I started with logic, uh, then the soul, and, and recently the body, 
uh, yeah, so I've been working constantly and consistently to try to, to order myself and uh, yeah. Also, we are living a, a revolutionary era, a revolutionary age for many reasons, but one of which is simply the, the spread of information. The current elites, not in terms of uh, competence, but in terms of power, they are being uh, deprived of, of their monopoly on the distribution of knowledge, which enables the manipulation of the masses. That's not new, this has been the case uh, for, for hundreds, if, uh, for, for thousands of years, since the, the division of labor has really established itself and a class of intellectuals with no uh, with the possibility of having leisure has emerged, the priests, not the Catholic priests, but the priests, uh, the, 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 the religious people uh, connected to the state, who, whose, whose role consists in distributing knowledge or, or, or keeping knowledge from the people to, to, to guide in the good sense or to manipulate in the bad sense the people and every, not every time, but most of the time when there has been a shift in the spread of information, it has brought about uh, drastic political and religious changes and the example in Western history, this is the Reformation in the 16th century brought about by, by a German, a German theologian, uh, Martin Luther and, and the, the revival of Protestantism in a historical context is partly connected and partly the consequence of the spread of knowledge uh, made possible by the printing press by, by another German, uh, Gutenberg, and the, 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 the revival in, in, in Western Europe, or in, 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 the, in the European uh, Christendom, uh, of classical text from the Byzantium Empire at the end of the 15th century, after the fall of um, Constantinople, uh, the, the, the wise and, 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 and knowledgeable People, but that's the official story. They they brought um, the the classics, which had been the classics of, of Rome and Greece, which had been preserved in the Byzantine Empire, uh, to to Europe, uh, which enabled the revival of knowledge and brought about a tremendous boiling of ideas, the discovery of the new world as well, etc., which brought 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 forth a, a, a search for for a return to the roots returns to, to purity in the case of Christ, Christianity that's what uh, a return to the, the official text of the Bible that's what drove the Protestant Reformation against the monopoly of knowledge and interpretation that the, the church the Catholic Church had yeah and then a couple of centuries later uh, with the, the rise of the, the bourgeoisie and the spread of knowledge in the coffee shops or the, the pubs or the 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 salon, the the the, bourg, the salon, the, 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 the meeting places of the bourgeoisie, uh, in the case of France, but in the developed um, and wealthy capitals of Europe, uh, it has enabled the bourgeoisie here. That's a Marxist analysis, but it's partly true. The rising bourgeoisie, traders, uh, businessmen, bankers, lawyers, uh, clerks, and intellectual professions, one might say, to acquire power through, through education which disturbed and disrupted the status, the power status that the aristocracy had, that's what happened in the 18th century in France, and it brought about the French Revolution and it's kind of a different story but it partly connected uh, the, the, the American Revolution that was already the case in the previous century with the, the the glorious revolution of the English, and then the, the, the nationalist revolutions, the liberal and nationalist revolutions in Europe throughout the 19th century, uh, yeah, it's, it's also strongly connected to the spread of knowledge. And we live in an era where the totality of world knowledge is made available. And it means that potentially all intelligent people uh, are, are capable of, of, of teaching themselves, of, of learning, and, and uh, there, there is no the, the, the medium, the media, not the journalist and the radio and the press, but the media, the, 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 the intermediary between knowledge and the people, they are being, uh, they, they encounter uh, competition, whereas they had always been historically uh, in a position of monopoly, except 
here, maybe in the 19th century, the, the century of classical liberalism in developed Western countries, there was no monopoly uh, formally because there was f free speech and freedom of the press in the US and gradually uh, in the, with the liberalization of the ancient, um, the, the old order in Europe, starting in France and the liberal reforms in England, in Germany, in Italy, etc. Nationalism was connected with, with, with liberty and liberalism as well. So for in, during the, the 19th century and until the rise of total, totalitarian regimes in the 20th century, there was a strong impulse towards liberty and, and a free press and a, and a free exchange of ideas and political freedom, etc., etc. But it has been uh, s severely reduced, one might say, with the totalitarian regimes, fascism, national socialism, communism, Bolshevism, etc. And then, even in the so-called liberal democracies who won the Second World War in, in the West, um, freedom has been reduced significantly for moral reasons. But with the Internet, it is now re-emerging. And uh, yeah, this is why we live a revolutionary age. But it's not... In, in any country, specifically, actually, actually it is in, in a lot of countries, predominantly the wealthy uh, countries who have access to technology and who have a culture of, of liberty which is still not completely uh, uh, erased, one might say, uh, but eventually it, it is worldwide because uh, by the very nature of the internet, knowledge becomes accessible everywhere uh, in, in, in real time eventually. Yeah, and that's why I try to provide the, the conceptual order. Yeah, then about truth and falsehood. Uh, the, the intelligent people they are slowly noticing that in the Western world, actually, we, we can deduce that it's the case in most other countries, but it's specific, it's more intense in the West. Language has been falsified. The sciences have been falsified, words have become meaningless most of the time in the public sphere. Uh, there, there is no rigorous definition, uh, there, there is a, 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 a falsification of language. The sciences have been falsified or censored since the, the, the 1950s for moral reasons. And now with the advent of the internet, there is a, a restoration of, of of, of rigorous science in, in the realm of sociobiology, most notably. Uh, and for those who study economics, the interest rates on, on loans, which enable investment, savings, uh, planning uh, for the future, etc., have been falsified and are being falsified by the policy of the central banks. I will not explain thoroughly these books. They talk about this very well. Uh, and there's a, a constant falsification of prices. So finance is being falsified because of the, the, the expans expansionary uh, policy of the fiat currency system. And prices on the market are being constantly falsified because of government regulation. So language, the sciences, um, the, 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 the interest rates in, in, in finance and the economy and the prices are being falsified and the consequence is that the rest of society is kind of false uh, to the, to the, in, in a meaning that there is a lot of confusion, a lot of distortion, and it can be quite confusing. But to oppose truth and falsehood, it's a simplicity because the truth consists in restoring order, precisely, or, or uh, unveiling the falsehood. So the truth does not exist independently of the falsehood, it is the process of extracting the truth from what is not yet true, but the truth is a process. Yeah, but uh, in, in, to simplify, uh, there is true, true and false, but actually truth is a process of refinement. That's a rough diamond is, is, is false in the sense that it's not a polished diamond, but it's not false completely because the, 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 the po polished diamond exists potentially in the rough diamond. It has just to be carved and refined and uh, sculpted, etc. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, I wrote how to secure liberty. Uh, it, it begins by by. That's what I intend to do and what I have been doing with my videos on home economics. Uh, the, the purpose is to secure free speech uh, because free speech enables the, the rational agreement between humans through, through science, uh, rationality and, and liberalism in the broader sense because it enables men to peacefully argue with one another, to debate and, and to pursue the truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is why I promote libertarianism, because liberalism has kind of degenerated in some sort of a moral collectivism in the West, and then socialist collectivism economically as well. But libertarianism is the ideology, the, the, the doctrine, it's not an ideology, the doctrine which enables the, the, the peaceful resolve of conflicts through rational debate and argument and, and uh, 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 harmonized and, and if not respectful, at least respectable in theory, conflict of opposing viewpoint to, to, to enable the emergence of truth. Yeah. Also, I wrote, the purpose is not to fight against people, but to fight against ideas, because people, they can change their mind if uh, they, they are uh, capable of, of understanding and of, of reasoning, understanding ideas and reasoning, whatever their other determination, uh, age, ethnicity, gender, well, age, ethnicity, uh, culture, of, of culture, origin, nationality, citizenship, uh, class, etc., and gender as well. Uh, they are capable of, of expressing or understanding at least the truth if it is formulated in an intelligible language. So people can change for the better if they are stimulated by the, the good ideas, by, by proper and good ideas. So that's why, from a moral standpoint, uh, struggle does not consist in struggling against a, a certain group of people um, for their natural determination, against a certain ethnic or racial group, against a certain uh, demographic group, against a certain uh, cl class uh, economic group, but uh, or against a certain gender, or against a certain uh, uh, other determinations which people cannot change. Strictly speaking, they can change their class, but by rising or, or falling into the social hierarchy of economic status. But morality, that, that's why libertarianism is genuinely a moral, a moral philosophy. It's a political philosophy, but actually it's not political because it seeks precisely to abolish politics, but it's truly moral and good in the, 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 the most uh, noble sense of, of, of Christianity because it enables and it promotes the possibility of a rational and peaceful agreement between all thinking humans. Uh, so in this sense, it is egalitarian but it's an egalitarianism of intelligence, it's an aristocratic egalitarianism. But it's demanding, because it, is, it requires uh, effort to, to pursue the truth, courage, uh, um, um, willingness, uh, and, 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 and a certain struggle, one might say, but it, it, it's a moral and good ideal, because it, it, it does not exclude anyone a priori. It, 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 it leaves, it enables the possibility of including potentially everyone, at least every potentially rational agent, humans or non-humans, it, it enables the possibility of including anyone. Th there is no a priori exclusion of, of any group based on, on, um, on, on a natural, one might say, uh, uh, determination. It doesn't mean that libertarianism includes every, uh, everyone a posteriori, namely someone who, uh, that, that's why the, the enemy, when I say, the opponent of libertarianism is, is socialism or collectivism, because this is an ideology which refuses uh, 
rational debate. Uh, yeah, but but uh, socialism is a state of mind. It's not a determination of nature. You you if you are a socialist or a collectivist, you can grow and mature. That was my case when I was younger, and I have matured, and I'm still in a process of, of growing up. But you can change for the better. You are not condemned for determination independent of your will or your intelligence. Of course, there are people who here for the um, socio-biological and anthropological reasons who are genuinely limited cognitively. It's not a, a, a logical impossibility, but it's, it's a, 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 a cognitive uh, limitation. So it, uh, that's what I've been thinking about. Libertarianism potentially can appeal to everyone, but people who are not really intelligent for, for uh, co cognitive anthropological reasons, pe people who are really limited intellectually uh, for, for biological reasons, it does not like, affect uh, any group completely, but there are differences between the various groups, but people who are really limited as individuals in terms of intelligence, they could uh, accept libertarianism, and they can actually, uh, at least he, then it has to be adapted, etc. But it, it's not contradictory. It's not, it's not necessarily easy. Maybe empirically it's impossible to include everyone, but at least theoretically it's possible. Yeah, so that, that's why it's, it's moral uh, in a sense. It's, it's difficult, but uh, yeah. Also, uh, I wrote uh, <coughs> I've already said this, I think, in a previous uh, video. Uh, the reason why <laughs> I am doing what I do, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is the empirical reason which has started me in my uh, philosophical work uh, since last year, is to, to try to, to, to solve or to stop the, the, the conflict uh, uh, between Russia and Ukraine, but actually to stop all conflicts eventually, because there is a reason, because I wrote since uh, 1914, and the First World War, uh, there are no more heroes in wars, or there are still there still are heroes, but heroism in in a classical sense of the, the heroic warrior has has died uh, once and for all. One might say because with the advent of modern technology, it's not a matter of, of individual skill or courage, or very rarely, because entire uh, group of people can be annihilated uh, by by. Uh, machine guns or uh, bombs or uh, uh, all sorts of destructive weapons. So war, uh, in, in the traditional sense, uh, which was promoted by some traditionalist, uh, a lot of traditionalist uh, 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 traditions like certain form of, of, of Islam, but also the European tradition of uh, um, the, the, the Middle Ages, um, and and the, the heroiz heroism of the Greeks or the, the heroic virtues of uh, the Vikings, etc. In the modern world, it, it can no longer work as such because because of the advent of technology. Uh, in in today's um, world, uh, a bureaucrat, uh, a military bureaucrat, can can kill uh, uh, thousands of people by just pushing a button. Uh, hundreds of, of miles away from the, 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 the targeted population and there is no uh, there, there is no um, in a way that there is no uh, valor to this in a sense that's not his individual fault but it means the, the war has completely uh, lost it, its ancestral meaning which could be defended in a certain way, in a certain way when Wars between uh, aristocratic warlords precisely was was limited in in technology and in scope, but with the advent of modern democracies, war have become already with the Napoleonic wars, but especially in the 20th century, the democratic wars are, are wars of of, of there are these are total wars which target civilians and and and, and draft uh, 
significant proportion of the population driven by, by ideology, by, by state um, state induced conflicts and this is precisely what the libertarians have been constantly denouncing intelligently yeah, so this is why liberty and, and peace and order are, are connected and are interdependent in a way yeah Now, I will show uh, some of the documents. That's the document that I've been commenting for four days now and I intend in this video to comment uh, the two upper parts So, yeah, I intend to talk in this video The previous one that I've recorded I talked about personal life The first was psychology, the second clean your room The third personal life and in this one I will talk about growth and work, so uh, housing, education, transportation, entertainment, work, social skills, bureaucracy, information and civic life. So I will briefly introduce the document that I've already commented for hours and hours. It is the evolution of the soul, one might say, from the most natural basic needs to the more spiritual ones by, by going really from the, 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 the physiological health to the, the social well-being by interacting with the rest of society through, through work and then kind of all the levels have to be more or less ordered to enable a, a healthy individual capable of being, becoming a free agent within society and a, a society can only be healthy if the majority of individuals are, are disciplined and responsible and, 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 um, and, 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 and grown in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But now I will introduce my, my other philosophical documents. Maybe I will put the video uh, by Zizek, there's a short video by Zizek about Hegel and aliens. Uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will remind myself to, to put the link uh, of the video by Zizek. Uh, this document... I will not comment because I have commented this document over and over, but briefly this is how the, the movement of spirit travels from left to right and, and by traveling from the one side to the other precisely consciousness people these are people actually these are ideas which move people uh, and, and all these determination they exist within the mind of, of really existing individuals for instance here to illustrate uh, the question of iq can be embodied by someone like richard lynn who is not very well known as of now but even jordan peterson we live in an age where the, the question of IQ uh, is being uh, uh, becoming widespread. Patriotism, uh, there, there is a return to patriotism is in a lot of Western countries. Uh, Brexit, uh, America first, uh, uh, Marine Le Pen in France, um, the, 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 what they call the far right in Italy, uh, these kind of movements, uh, there is a, a return of, of 
the tendency towards virtue and marriage among among Western women. They, they, there are a lot of YouTube channels which advocate marriage, uh, virtue, sexual behavior. The, there was also the MIGTO movement, someone like uh, Andrew Tate, um, Rolo Tomasi, and people like this. Uh, and here, what I talk about, uh, home economics is an aspect of economics in a way, but also of psychology. Uh, the libertarians, the, the rise one way, it, it's still at this moment it's very limited quantitatively, but the depth and the intensity of the ideas will make them more widespread. And Ron Paul, here, these kind of books and the kind of ideas which are being um, promoted in these books, it's an illustration of the, the consciousness, the rising consciousness of the problem of central banking and the, an advocacy of free trade and libertarianism and uh, individualism, free speech, uh, autonomy, federalism, etc. Et so this is to illustrate, but I could illustrate with every, uh, every determination. Uh, this is what structures the life of, of ideas, and eventually the life of the mind and of the spirit, predominantly in the Western world, directly in the world at large. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how to comment this document. I mean, that's not the purpose, but because I don't know what people understand when they see this, because there's a very, there are very few people who watch this, who have watched this, and those who have, I have received zero comment about this, almost. So I don't know what people understand when they see this, but yes. I wrote also about America. Uh, America is my political compass. I will show a document uh, that I have uh, in front of me. Uh, yeah. If I had to define America, what has made the success of America, I would say free speech, the Anglo-Saxons, and a lot of resources, the free together, it has produced uh, the, 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 the greatest uh, nation on earth. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, America, I will comment uh, the document uh, that I will show, but America is the proof of the possibility of transcending tribalism. It's not always easy, but this country has proven uh, by, by the success of, of Afro-Americans, but also Hispanics, uh, Jews, uh, libertarian Jews, what do I say? Uh, Hispanics, Asians, Afro-Americans, and other ethnicities, that it is possible, it's not, maybe it's not as widespread as it could be, or maybe as it should be, depending on the perspective, but it's, it, it has proven, this country has proven the possibility of achieving a, a libertarian ideal. In here it means a society, a, a meritocracy actually, a meritocracy which requires, presupposes liberty, uh, where people can be judged on the, 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 what they bring to society. In, in the case of America, those who complain um, might say, yeah, it, it is a society which judges people based on the economic value that they bring to society. But if it's not economic, in the modern world, this is, this is po political values. People are, are promoted in a lot of bureaucratic societies by their political ability, which means political scheming, manipulation, uh, etc. So, yeah, but the US has proven that according to its own standards, namely being judged on intelligence, competence, hard work, innovation, uh, uh, economic success, it has offered to people of all races the proof not, not only the possibility, but the actualization of, of, of success. Not for all, but it, it has proven that in individuals can succeed of, of any other determination. Yeah. This is why there are a lot of problems uh, in America, but this is why it is a moral country more than most, if not all other countries on this planet, because it has offered and still offers the possibility 
of success for people based on characteristics which are not inherent in their natural faculty. Actually, the, the bell curve and other books, they show that it's partly, the success is partly and strongly correlated with IQ, which is not dependent on the, the ability of the person, but at least formally it has succeeded where most, if not or almost all other countries have failed or have not even attempted uh, to, 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 to achieve such a society, such an ideal. Yeah, there are those who have tried to, to, to establish a meritocratic society, as meritocratic as it can get with uh, the, 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 the intricacies of, uh, of, of human nature, one might say. There are those who have attempted and failed, those who have attempted and succeeded but not as much as the US and those who have not even tried. Yeah. So now I will show my, my view of America. That's another document as, uh, that I show. It's not really a document, but uh, it's. Uh, yeah, my view of America. It's not a, a complete, but it's just to, to give a simple, uh, simplified view of what I envision. <laughs> if there are Americans who watch this, uh, when, whenever they watch this, Maybe they will find this uh, kind of comical, or profound, or spiritual, or uh, or great, or, or everything at, at the same time, depending on, uh, <laughs> I don't know, uh, yeah. It's not, uh, I have not, uh, I have not, the document, I, I, I comment before showing the document, I have not, thought this through uh, for very long. Actually, I, I put it into place in uh, three minutes, but it's the result of uh, months and years of thinking. And what is important is not the formal presentation, of course, because it's a little bit, uh, that's the comical aspect. It's the, um, the idea or the idea that it represents. So, <laughs> If I had to, 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 to simplify, this is how I envision America, the United States of America. Ron Paul, Charles Murray, and Thomas Sowell, these are three archetypes in the modern world of the American ideal. For me, I, 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 I know, I wrote, but actually that, that has been on my mind for a very long time. The, the US, they are my, my political compass in a sense that uh, for me, these, these three persons, not the person, but the ideas that they embody, because Mr. Ron Paul and Mr. Thomas Sowell, they are a little bit old, and even Charles Murray is a little bit old. So th these are not these three individuals, but what they embody, the ideas that they have developed and, and expanded and expanded as well throughout their career and their life. They, they are the ideal America, and these people or their ideas ought to be at the center of 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 of, of America. Uh, they, they are true Americans, classical Americans in in the modern world, and their ideas they ought to be at the center. Which means you can be on the left or on the right of of of, of the ideas that these people promote. But uh, if they are in the center, yeah, and here are some of their books. Uh, Inside American Education by Thomas Sowell, Facing Reality, uh, Two Truths About Race in America by Charles Murray, The Revolution by Ron Paul, uh, Intellectuel et Race, uh, it's translated in French with a preface by Mr. Laurent Oberton, that's a book by Thomas Sowell, The School Revolution by Ron Paul, uh, Income Inequality and IQ by Charles Murray, Real Education by Charles Murray, American Exceptionalism by Charles Murray, and Pursue the Cause of Liberty uh, by Ron Paul, and here, yeah, Basic Economics by Thomas Sowell, and The Bell Curve, Intelligence and Class Structure in American Life by Charles Murray and Richard Einstein. So, the, these books, I could have picked other books, but uh, yeah. Um, 
they um, they represent the American ideal uh, of excellence, search for for competence, improvement, and and a certain form of realism about intelligence, uh, race, uh, what what makes success, and and the ideal of of an aristocratic democracy, which is actually a republic. Uh, they, they, they are really the, the modern uh, knights of, of America, one might say. Uh, there are others, uh, uh, but they are symbolic in a way. And here, the, the, the comical aspect uh, is that I have never talked, uh, at least consciously, to, to an American. I've never been to the US. I don't know a lot empirically about the history of the US. So this view of America, it might seem completely ludicrous. For a person uh, of uh, an empirical American, that, that might seem completely ludicrous, but for me, in the in the 21st century, the, these three persons, not necessarily as individuals, although it's it's important as well, but the ideas that they embody, the, the spirit that they represent, from my perspective of, of uh, here I speak as a as an empirical uh, continental European, maybe as an empirical Frenchman or. Uh, uh, an empirical uh, Germanic, uh, culturally German uh, person, as, as an empirical person, this is my view of America. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, I could have add, added a lot of names and uh, intellectuals. I would have added uh, the, the libertarian Jews like Rothbard and Ayn Rand, but also libertarians of all origin. Hopper, Hans Hermann Hopper, who is a German, Per Bailen, who is a Swede, but also with the left side and the right side, there are intelligent and less so, in, less intelligent left wing Americans, right wing Americans, conservative or intelligent and less intelligent. I could have added. Uh, all the, the pop stars, uh, the singers, uh, the, the artists, etc. But here it's really to, to, to simplify to, to, the, to, to the utmost uh, the, 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 my view of what America ought to, to be and, and has been and, and still is, but has to, to become again. Uh, th this has to be the, the center. This is my political compass. And now I will um, comment my other document away because. Um, here, that's the perspective of a, of a European of Europe, or, or simply the perspective of an intelligent person. Uh, that's the song, the song of, of Eminem, uh, Monkey See, Monkey Do. I know that a lot of Western countries, uh, I know this empirically but also logically, they, they are just copies of of the US, the intellectual and political life of France, Germany, England, but also Canada, Australia, etc., is just a copy, um, a copy of, of the, 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 the life, the intellectual life of the US, uh, because it's the country which has the, the greatest freedom of speech. The, the greatest culture of excellence in the arts and the sciences, the greatest uh, educational system, in spite of all the, the problems, but still, the, the, it still produces competent people. If, in spite of the ideological uh, brainwashing that they are subjected to, but for, for the hard sciences, the technological aspect, and uh, it, it's very difficult to brainwash. So if we leave aside the, the, the liberal uh, brainwashing, it still has a very high standards of educational achievement in spite of the decline, etc. But I know that Germany, France, England and all other Western countries and, and all other, a lot of other countries, they, they, they just reflect poorly uh, and with adaptations of their own particular case and their own, own singular uh, case, they are just reflections of the, the, the intellectual life of the US, which is also singular in the sense that Ron Paul, Charles Murray, Thomas Sowell, their ideas are universal when they are true, but the, that's uh, American exceptionalism. They, they are only adapted in their specific aspect to the US, and 
the, the universal in their ideas can be implemented elsewhere and has to be eventually uh, with adaptations, but uh, it's specific to the US. Uh, Ron Paul and Charles Murray, although they are of, of German or, or Anglo-Saxon descent and they are native English-speaking persons, uh, the, the, their ideas, even though they are very similar to the classical view of the British and the English, they, are, they cannot be rigorously um, transposed in, in the context of England because of the historical and cultural specificities, etc. So the, the universal and the particular has to adapt to each singular, here I'm talking about countries, but my, my, my political compass, because for the past century we've been living in a world dominated by the US economically, militarily, uh, culturally, uh, uh, politically, through indirect means, but politically, and, and in terms of, of, of influence, um, the whole world has lived and still lives under uh, American hegemony. And that's why that's the moral compass, the, the moral and political compass uh, for, for, for restor restoring sanity uh, in the West and in the world at large. Uh, the, the ideas of these men have to become at the center again. So America has to become America again, to, 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 to become American and America again. And, and all the others, they just copy with their own specificity, but, but in order to restore liberty and sanity and order, that's my current view. And it, it's not, uh, it, will, it will not change in, in the fundamental determinations. Uh, I, I know that I still have a lot to improve and I can refine and adapt and, and, and change my perspective on certain topics, but I have a, a fixed view that I know is true. The libertarianism is, is, is true morally, politically, for the United States of America, because that's American exceptionalism, and for the Western world at large, for anthropological reasons. For the rest of the world, I haven't yet figured out, but the fundamental determinations, uh, the, the, the inherent dignity of the individual is universally true. It has to be universally true. Of course, it's very difficult, but uh, yeah, that's what I had to say. Also, now, uh, UPS, precisely, I've understood, I already understood this many months ago, but uh, it's becoming more, uh, more clear, in a way, that Uh, empirically, precisely, uh, um, empirically, I cannot be an American because I, I've never, I, I was not uh, raised, and I've not, I, I was not raised in the U.S., which is, for me, it's kind of, of a saddening in a way because I would have liked to, but actually, here maybe at some moment, I, I don't know, but I can anticipate. But I, I don't know yet, but pe people, maybe they, they will, th that will be uh, one of the good aspects of negativity is that in order to, 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 to understand and to appreciate uh, anything at all, when I say there has to be distanciation and, in, yeah, so I understood already a few months ago, many months ago, but it's becoming more clear that I cannot be an empirical American, and I, I cannot know America the way an, empir an empirical American does, like I cannot know England or, or Germany or, or any other country the way a native person born and raised and, uh, or in the country can, but that's, that's a problem because uh, ideally I would like to be a, a German and an American, <laughs> but the good thing is th th this, this distanciation enables me Actually, it's true for everyone to have a distance towards here in the case of Kant, to have a distance towards the other. It's limiting because you cannot know the, the other country, whatever it is, uh, if you are not uh, if you have not grown up or if you are not a native of the country, you cannot know it as well as the natives can. But in a certain regard, you can know it a lot more because you have the distanciation and you you can bring light in a way. To, to, to the others, and here I talk about the US, but it's true of, of the English, or the, the, the Germans, 
and, and other European countries, but here I speak from my perspective. England, Germany, and, and the US, these are the three empirical countries outside of France that I know the most. Uh, but it's true for, for, for every, every, every country that's a, a, a pattern in, in a European literature. The other who looks at the self and enables the self to understand itself. Montesquieu wrote a novel, The Persian Letters. He imagined a, a Persian, that would be the modern iron, visiting uh, 18th century France and, and giving his own perspective, which is enriching in a sense that the other notices things about a given country or a given person that the person cannot know because, because it is plunged within itself in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I will make a joke, right? It's not a joke, but if only the Americans, as I envisioned them, if only they could, they could uh, uh, discover uh, how, how wonderful they are. Uh, yeah. Th that's the good aspect about me. Uh, <laughs> America, of course, it's fascinating. A, a lot of people agree with this, but of course, I can be fascinated by uh, uh, a lot of aspects that a lot of people are fascinated by. And I, I genuinely am. Uh, I, I love Britney and uh, I love American pop culture, of course, but here, my view of America, I, I think it's kind of unique. And uh, at some moment, people uh, will, will discover what I have been discovering myself about America from my perspective. Uh, yeah. I could have added Britney Spears, uh, of course, with uh, Ron Paul, Charles Murray, and uh, Thomas Sowell. Yeah, but political America precisely is anti political to the greatest extent possible. That's the truth of America, that's American exceptionalism. America is a country where politics, historically, has been, at least s until the past 50 years or 60 years, and, and, and has to, to be kind of abolished to the greatest extent possible. It's an anti-political country in the in a most noble sense, uh, where, where the ideal of the founders, here that's a little bit of a, of a political mythology, but uh, I, I, I agree nonetheless, the ideal of the founders, whatever their personal intention was, was actually to, to abolish politics and, and to to limit politics to the greatest extent possible in order to enable a free society, which means a society of responsible individuals, uh, individually and collectively, uh, in terms of community organizing. And this is why I make videos about home economics. Yeah. I will make a good joke because I have enough empirical culture to know that all the people, I mean not all, but a lot of people who live outside of America, they love America and they worship America and they fantasize about America. And I have enough empirical culture about modern, the modern US to know that <laughs> once you live in the US, everyone hates America. Every American hates America. <laughs> Uh, with a few exceptions, but the leftists, uh, they, they hate America because it's, it's, it's too racist. Uh, the the right-winger, the radical right-winger, because it's not uh, white, white enough. The, the leftist, because it's too white. Uh, the, the socialist, uh, democratic, because it's too capitalist. The conservative, because it's not capitalist enough. Or because it's decadent. Uh, the, the blacks, some of them, uh, because of the historical uh, oppression with slavery. The natives, well... Yeah, uh, yeah. So America, I, I've already, I already knew. That America is a country which is defined by the fact that every American hates the country, not because of of what it is, or because because the country is not as they they would like it to be. So uh, America, I already figured this out a, a, a long time ago. America is the country where everyone 
uh, wants the country to be different from what it is. And the totality of all these people who complain about America not being uh, whatever they would like it to be, this is precisely America. <laughs> and thank God there are uh, outsiders who, who really love America. Uh, So yeah, uh, about the universal revolution, which, which will be brought forth uh, in the coming times uh, at some moment, because f because of the very structure of, of the internet and what I said at the beginning with the spread of knowledge, uh, there, there will be a, a universal revolution because because knowledge is being shared and it is becoming dependent independent from the center of powers. Uh, at, there, 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 there are revolutions at all levels in, in the sciences, in, in, in ethics, uh, in economy, with the, 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 the Bitcoin currency, uh, uh, in, in, in knowledge, in, in, uh, in management, in work, uh, etc. At all levels, demographic, etc. But the universal revolution has to be adapted to each particular context, that's UPS, and, and um, yeah, I, have, I happen to have watched a video by, by an American woman who speaks French and, and she, she talks about, maybe I will put the link if I find the, 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 the channel again. She talks about the, the differences, uh, the, 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 the state of mind. And here this is precisely the, the, the spirit here, it's not in the rigorous German metaphysical deductive way, but the spirit, the spirit of a people um, in, in the most subtle aspect, it is something which cannot be defined, either, neither by the people itself or by the, the foreigners. It's too, uh, in a way, it's vague, it's pervading, it's, it's very difficult to define. Uh, yeah. The, the kind of, the, the, the spirit here is not in the sense really of the profound, complex ideas or scientific discoveries or, or political views, no, but the, the spirit of the people in the sense of the customs. Uh, yeah, this is something that foreigners notice precisely. That's an illustration of, of negativity in the good sense, in the the negative which brings wealth, uh, not economic wealth, but but cultural wealth, cultural enrichment. Um, to be confronted by a foreigner in in, a, in, a, in an exchange. He notices things that the, the natives, if we, call, if, we call, if we talk about tourism uh, or, or traveling, he notices things which the, the, the natives of whatever country they cannot notice because for them it's so self-evident that only someone who is distantiated and differentiated from them can notice. It happens a lot to the people who, have, uh, who visit Japan or the, the Asians who visit uh, Western Europe. Uh, yeah. Also, I wrote uh, the, the, the EU, the European Union, is to, to, to each European countries, uh, and including France, what France as an institutional country is to all its regions. Uh, namely, uh, France, in my view, it's not really a country. Because it, it's a centralized bureaucracy and it consists in all its particularization. You know, historically, France was a very diverse and very rich country with a lot of particular identities for the various regions. And France, as it has become over the century, it has become a centralized bureaucratic state. And the European Union unconsciously is trying to, to, to add adopt and to adapt the, the French model, which is actually an anti-model, to, to Europe, namely to, to coalesce a lot of, of different nations and to blur them together. But Europe does not exist, here I'm talking about continental Europe, Europe does not exist as a political entity as such because it has many particularities, but precisely the universal exists within each particularity and Europe 
is not an abstract identity, I'm talking here about continental Europe, like France is not or was not an, an, an abstract centralized entity, it, it is all the particularities. Europe, continental Europe, it's not the EU, but it's Germany, Italy, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, uh, Poland, France, um, Spain, uh, England, uh, the Scandinavian countries, etc., etc. And, and they themselves, uh, the, the, the regional aspect, it's strong in Spain, in Italy, in Germany, in France, in England, as far as I know, but it's maybe less so, but the, the, the regional differences within a centralized or within a unified institutional nation, that's UPS. Germany as such, uh, actually, the, 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 there is no Germany as such, although there is, there are only particular German regions with each their specific identity, and that's why it has taken a lot of time for Germany to be unified by Bismarck in the 19th century. And the same with the, the United States, actually. Uh, each state of the Union has its own specific identity, that's the P and the U. Yeah. And, and the, the EU is just trying to erase, uh, to, to reach the universal by erasing all the particulars, and of course uh, it cannot work, because uh, each particular European nation has always had its uh, specific and, and strongly, uh, uh, strongly marked identity. Yeah. But yeah, the universal cannot exist independently from the particulars. It is by particularizing itself in each particular that the universal truly becomes itself in a way. Also, I wrote, I discovered this, the more uh, I, I, I grow old, one might say, <laughs> uh, the more I, I discover hidden assumptions that I have unconscious assumption about a lot of topics which are for me self-evident but which are not self-evident for a lot of people. What I thought about yesterday I think or a few days ago was simply the fact that for me reading books whenever I have leisure and even when I don't because a lot of my work consists in reading books but whenever I have leisure or whenever I grant myself leisure I read books for me that's self-evident but I've realized over the past few months that for a lot of people it is not. Uh, the, the idea which is connected that education does not stop once you leave high school or college, uh, that it's a learning curve uh, for your entire life, you have to keep gathering and actualizing knowledge and information, for me that's self-evident. But actually for a lot of people it's not. These are a lot of assumptions that I have and that I discover precisely by being confronted by others here, others are just people of different uh, individuals or different social class or different level of intelligence or level of culture. Uh, what, what is self-evident for me is not self-evident at all for a lot of people. That's why I wrote, who knows what? Because here I will talk about uh, psychology. Um, I have understood, thanks to the videos of Psych2Go, that a lot of people uh, a, a lot of highly intelligent people, they, they are constantly uh, downgrading themselves because, because they are intelligent, they always see the failures or, or the, what is lacking and they never see the success, their own success and, and their achievements because they are very demanding and they are constantly in search for, for improvement, which makes them in a way kind of unhappy a lot of times and, and yeah. Also, I wrote, I've understood and I understand more and more the problem of status in human interactions. Uh, people, they judge others because of their status. So if you have a status, if you are respected or renowned, people will, will give you credit, whatever you say. And if you are not, if you have no status, people will not take what you say into account whatever you say. So if you have no status and you say very intelligent things, you will be kind of ignored. If you have a status and if you say dumb things, you will be listened to or obeyed or followed uh, in spite of, of the stupidity. 
That's the problem of politics. This is why libertarians, libertarians, they are really the best uh, intellectually and morally because they, they, they are very intelligent, very educated, very knowledgeable, and they, 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 they defend and offer a, a good in the, in the most noble sense because it is universalizable, a good, they are kind of idealist in a way, that's the, 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 the criticism that radical right-wingers or left-wingers have sometimes, but radical right-wingers they have about libertarians because the libertarians are accused of being idealists, of, being, of having too high a vision of, of humans, maybe, although they are kind of realistic and, 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 and common sense based, but uh, yeah, they, they have a very low status because they are criticized or censored or ignored by, by all the statists and collectivists from left and right, but actually they are, their ideas, they are simply, most of the time, they are correct, they are very intelligent. They really, in the, the, the best intellectuals as a group, I'm not talking about individuals, but the, the best group of intellectuals in the modern world, uh, intellectuals, not scientists, the best group of intellectuals, these are the libertarians, they are those who offer most consistently more, most uh, thoroughly, most systematically, more, most rigorously, the, the best kind of books. Charles Murray is, is excellent. Um, uh, Ron Paul is excellent. Uh, I haven't read a lot of books by Thomas Sowell, but he's very good. I haven't read a lot of books by Murray Rothbard, but it, it was excellent as well. Uh, Mr. Per Byland, I have only read one of his books, but I, I have another, I'm sure it's excellent as well. Uh, they are consistently excellent, and there is a reason, it's because they are very intelligent, but also they have to struggle against the system, as they call this, against the left and against the radical right. So, so they, they, are, they are struggling against everyone, so they, they, are, they are in a constant struggle. Like the Germans, uh, historically, in the middle of Europe, they have to struggle against the French on the west, against the Poles on the east, against the, the, the Austrian and the not the Austrian economies, but the Austrian of Austria and the Italians on the south against the English who are competing for uh, supremacy over the European continent or, or over the trade uh, with the Russians, they have to compete with everyone <laughs> those, those poor Germans, they are oppressed on all sides uh, this is one of the reasons maybe why they are so good because they are in a state of constant struggle and they have to constantly improve and adapt uh, yeah, and the same goes with the libertarians uh, and the Jews, uh, historically, this is what explains the intellectual brilliance of the Jews, uh, because they have lived in a state of, of constant uh, oppression or an an anxiety in a way, because a tiny minority in a sometimes hostile societies, there are reasons why sometimes there is hostility, but the, the, this explains, sociobiologically, culturally, this explains the, the tremendous success of the Jews, because they have had to struggle and to adapt uh, into sometimes difficult uh, situations. Yeah. Also, I wrote a group think. Uh, it's usually false. I spontaneously trust intelligence, but I'm not nihilistic. So I, I, I tend to agree with some of the analyse, analyses of radical right people from an epistemological standpoint, but I, I, I reject their nihilism. That's why I have been promoting, and I will continue to promote home economics, they need to encourage civic society and civic life, and not just say, oh, there are problems everywhere, we don't care. I understand why people think like this, because the problems are so numerous and so complex, but it requires the, 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 the strength and the will to, to, to work, for oneself, of course, but for, for oneself in relation to others. It's kind of exhausting, but uh, yeah. Also, I wrote, so here the, these are ideas which are not necessarily uh, structured, but I wrote this in a few minutes uh, before starting the recording of the video this afternoon. I spontaneously love and appreciate intelligent people of, of all origins 
um, because I have watched over the past few weeks videos by autistic um, persons, males or females, uh, but these are overwhelming, overwhelmingly white people, but uh, I have watched videos by, by black people, uh, Afro-Americans, who are autistic and spontaneously I feel a lot of affinity with them because really autistic people, all the people that I have listened to, they are really intelligent in a different way and I, I, I identify with them and really the, 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 that, that's why racism is morally wrong and and people here I, because I'm intelligent in, intelligent enough to understand people of course they should not be judged on, on, on their race or on their biological determinations so I sound like a leftist when I say this and I agree in principle with the left but the problem is that the left uses the, the good principle to pretend that there are no inequalities or that all inequalities are social etc which makes them completely lose sight of real distinctions uh, namely it's not because uh, it's not because racism is morally wrong that anti-racism is morally right it's more subtle than this uh, my, my view the moral view is, is not racism nor anti-racism from a moral standpoint this is race realism from a scientific standpoint namely to be able to discuss race like Charles Murray does in his books in an intelligent and honest way and, and, and from a moral standpoint the, the truth which is very difficult but this is the moral truth is meritocracy which is individualistic uh, that's the ideal of Martin Luther King but it's, it's very difficult Th that, that's true but it's very difficult to reach because it's easier to judge people by, by their group belonging because uh, people they do not always have the time to judge every individual as an individual it's, it's, sim it's simpler to, to reduce to group belonging uh, that's the problem but, uh, yeah. because here the ideal The ideal of mankind, which is the ideal of God actually, is to transcend tribalism, but not as modern white people have tried to do over the past uh, many decades, maybe by, by, by hating themselves, by, by hurting their own group and then loving all others. It's to transcend tribalism by judging people as individuals. That's Christian morality in the most noble, best sense. But in order to judge people as individuals, uh, there has to be the, the political and economic conditions which enable people to, 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 to be independent in mind and, and economically. Uh, the, that, that's the, the liberal in the classic sense, not the modern liberal, classical liberal ideal, which in the modern would be libertarianism, and it's morally good. The problem is that uh, it appeals, it, it's the truth, but it appeals uh, predominantly to intelligent people. And here I have to be realistic, there are a lot of people on this planet who are not very intelligent quantitatively. It's, it's, not, it's not a moral problem, but the problem is that they are manipulated by intelligent people who use the cognitive limitation of of, of a lot of people to, to deceive them and to manipulate them not for the good always so because I've understood over the past few months that basically I'm just if I had to classify myself as I think of myself at this moment in the process I am just a, I am a, an 18th or 19th century liberal which in the context of the 18th or 19th century in, in Western Europe would put me on the left but if you adopt the idea which were on the left uh, a couple of centuries ago in modernity it places me kind of on the far right 
This is the inside, that's why Ron Paul, Charles Murray and even Thomas Sowell are considered to be on the right. I know, I know. Uh, although, actually, they are not. It's, it's because the, 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 the modern society in America, but you know, in the entire West, has shifted so much towards the left. But actually, Ron Paul, Charles Murray, I, I know more about them politically than I do about uh, Thomas Sowell, but Charles Murray and Ron Paul, they, they are not right-wingers. They are libertarians. Namely, they, they define what the center ought to be in the US, and eventually they set the standards for all the, the monkeys uh, who copy America, namely the, those uh, backward the Europeans of the continent, <laughs> and the Canadians as well. It's, a, it's kind of a joke, really. it's kind of true. They, they have to, to, to set the standards uh, for the rest of the Western world and eventually for the rest of the world. It doesn't mean that the others have to copy rigorously because they can't, because of the specific history and culture of the US, etc. But, but uh, Ron Paul, should not be a right-winger. He's just a common-sense person, and so is Charles Murray, and so is uh, Thomas Sowell. They, they should not be considered right-wingers. They, they, they are just, uh, with their ideas, uh, a couple of centuries ago, they would, they would be on the left. I know the process, historical process has to evolve, but simply there has to be a return to sanity, and th this is if I had to simplify my, my political views, they ought to be at the center, not them as individuals, but their ideas. This is the, 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 the ideal of the founders. Uh, it's true, but uh, yeah, I don't like to use mythology uh, to, to justify... Uh, <laughs> uh, to, to, just, uh, to explain, to justify my views, but... Um, Yeah. yeah, and also I wrote you know, that that's, I will I will end uh, the introductory remarks about a little bit of culture. I have read a whole lot of books. Okay, it's been almost uh, one hour and twenty minutes. I've read a lot of books in my in my lifetime, and I still continue to read books. And if I had to simplify, I've I read mostly three kinds of uh, books books written in French by French people because this is. The most accessible language uh, for me as an empirical individual, uh, an enormous amount of books by, written by Anglo-Saxons, here it means Anglo-Saxons, English, Scottish, Americans, but also Canadian, Australian, New Zealander, but predominantly English people and Americans, and also German, uh, in German, but German metaphysics, and the distinction, I've drawn this uh, simply, but the Anglo-Saxon, the Anglo-Saxon books, overwhelmingly written by Anglo-Saxons, not only, but overwhelmingly, they are filled with data, statistics, facts, graphs, um, yeah, uh, quotes, so data, statistics, graphics, quotes, etc., etc., everything is empirically backed up, one might say. It's a recurring feature through all, almost all, good Anglo-Saxon books, whether written by English people or Americans. The French, I've noticed this because I haven't read French books for a lot of time, because I spent a lot of time reading German and Anglo-Saxon books, but the French... No, so first I define the Anglo-Saxon, then the German. The German is very conceptual, rigorous, uh, what did I write? Systematic systematicity, rigor, uh, and, and conceptual philosophical reasoning. So it's very abstract, very rigorous, a little bit heavy sometimes, uh, but it's very serious, ordered, rigor, rigor etc. Et in, in this sense, I'm, I'm metaphysically, I'm a German. For, for, for better and for worse, for better mostly. Yeah. And when you compare French books with Anglo-Saxon and German books, it's verbalism in the negative sense. And I wrote also brilliance of, 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 of literary expression. It has to be acknowledged. But it's a lot of verbalism. Uh, I, I, I'm shocked, uh, or not shocked, but I'm surprised. Every time I, I read 
a, a book written by a French person, not a, a practical book, but a book about politics or, uh, or sociology. The, the Anglo-Saxons, they back up everything they say with statistics, quotes, data, facts. The Germans that I've been reading, they don't back up anything, they deduce everything, everything is rigorously uh, connected, conceptually uh, structured, etc., etc. So there is a lot of empiricism in the Anglo-Saxon books. There, are no, there is no empiricism at all in German books, and the French, they do neither one nor the other, they just speak. Uh, so I wrote the Anglo-Saxon, that would be their books, they are structured like, like physics books. The German, it's more about logic. And the French, that would be literature. Uh, yeah. And I wrote here that's more subtle for uh, if there are really intelligent people uh, other than myself who watch this. Uh, the Anglo-Saxon that would be the democratic ideal because everything has to be backed up to, to be sure that the reader can check for himself. The, the Anglo-Saxon, I also they are kind of careful. Uh, it's like if every time an Anglo-Saxon wrote a book, he was afraid to be accused of 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 of, of uh, manipulating. So he wants to back up everything. He he fact he check facts everything. He wants to rigorously, not deduce, but rigorously prove that everything that he asserts can be empirically verified, as if he was worried that he might be accused of inventing things. So they are very careful. Uh, it's, a, it's good because, uh, in a way it's good, but in a way it's very boring and uh, it can be exhausting. But uh, yeah, so that's the democratic ideal. Uh, everyone ought to be able to find the same fact to check for himself, that's really to inform with sometimes an abundance of facts and statistics that are the reader. So that's really the Anglo-Saxon books, you know, these are democratic books in a good sense. Democracy is not always a, associated with praise when I speak it, but here that the, the, the democratic ideal, the egalitarianism of science, not of economics or politics, but the, the scientific egalitarianism, namely every intelligent lay person ought to be able to be enlightened, etc. That the enlightenment ideal, in a way, in the Anglo-Saxon way. The, the, the French, I simplify, but that, that would be aristocracy, because they are very bold in their writing. The, the, the books written by, by French intellectuals, it's like a, an exercise, an exercise of intellectual, not intellectual, of, of verbal brilliance, like the aristocrats uh, uh, fighting um, with spears and swords in the Middle Ages uh, to show off be, be, among one another. They, they, they want to prove their, their verbal vigor and their verbal creativity, etc. They are kind of bold, so they are the, op the opposite of the Anglo-Saxon. They have a, that would be panache in front, they, they are kind of a, uh, mavericks of uh, literary mavericks. Uh, they, they have a, 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 some sort of an aristocratic pride for a French intellectual. When when a French intellectual writes, he has some sort of a pride. He has to out compete uh, the, his peers from from the the point of view of verbal brilliance. Yeah. So it, that that would be the aristocratic view as opposed to the democratic view of the Anglo-Saxons. They are more bold in this sense than the Anglo-Saxons were more careful. And the, the, for the Germans, that would be <laughs> some sort of a monarchy. That, that's one principle. So democracy, that's the, 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 the many. The aristocracy, that's the few. And the German here, that would be the monarchy, in a sense that's the, the, the rule of the concept. There's one principle and everything has to be deduced. In Kant, uh, Hegel, uh, Fichte, uh, Schelling, uh, etc etc Leibniz that that one principle and everything flows from this that's the, the ruling principle so that that would be conceptual monarchy in a way and and here uh, that's a joke really that's really for the, the philosopher uh, that the German they reconcile the French and the English the French and the Anglo-Saxon by being both bold and careful they are here that's really comical that's a joke for the, the trained philosopher, they are careful in, in their reasoning because precisely they reason and everything is deduced and, and everything they, they say has to be derived from what has been previously inferred, everything has to be logically connected, etc. But in the same time, they are very bold while being careful because 
they assert things which are absolutely no, not backed up by any sort of empiricism. So in a way, they are very careful by, by, in their reasoning because they go step by step, Kant, uh, Hegel, etc., Fichte. But it's, it's very bold because they are completely indifferent to empiricism. That, that's the comical aspect. Uh, that it sounds like insanity, but actually it's a uh, it's mastered insanity that's ordered, uh, uh, ordered uh, insanity in a way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my view of the Germans, the French, and the Anglo Saxons, which includes the Americans. Uh, yeah, of course, I prefer, I prefer the Germans, but I have to give credit to the French and to the Anglo Saxons. Uh, that, that's the holy trinity of uh, the Western world and of, uh, of Europe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, it's been one hour and 26 minutes. Uh, I will take a short... Uh, Pause. Uh, I will do a little bit of virtue signaling. practicing this consistently and constantly for many months, sometimes many years. Yeah, yeah so now I will just take a short pause drink a glass of water. books that I wanted to share that I received either today or recently. state addicted to tobacco, smoke the state cashes in. So that's an example here, that's a book, uh, they, they are not exactly the same, but that's a, these are two singular books where actually they talk about the same topic. Uh, yeah. Here I bought this book about uh, pe pesticides and the dangers for biodiversity and health. So that's an ecological book. When I found this book, The Suicide of the Species, a 
about how human activities produce more and more diseases. The production of diseases. Yeah. So the, these are the books uh, that I could add to the series of books that I've recommended over the past three days in my videos about home economics. So now, uh, I will just I will just uh, show the, the, the documents that I've already showed previously and then I will talk about uh, education, uh, transportation, housing. I will not comment uh, again, I let people read because I've done this already uh, almost three times. Uh, these are pieces of advice that I can give. I will post uh, not all the video ones, they are recorded and I have uh, watched them and ma made the, the structure, uh, outlined the structure. I will not post them all at once, but I will probably put the links to the previous ones so that the people who are interested, and of course here I, I briefly comment, these are just uh, pieces of advice that I have implemented myself, but of course once the structure is shared, if people find value or interest in the structure, they are free to add their own tips and their own daily routine and their own uh, modes of behavior to help uh, simplify or, or improve. Uh, yeah, this is what I have done independently. Uh, it has helped me a lot. Uh, yeah. I, um, this, is, this will be the last video uh, about the, the, the home economics as such, but actually I intend maybe uh, once uh, the, the, the series is completed to, to, to provide additional documents to illustrate what I've been doing, uh, Excel documents, and maybe I will show uh, the way I've organized uh, my library and uh, etc. I don't know yet, but I don't know how many, maybe there will be an introduction plus the four parts of the home economic series, plus maybe additional documents, so maybe there will be six, six, I don't know yet. Uh, as I speak now, as I record this, they have, they have already been, um, uh, three videos which have been recorded. Uh, yeah. Because here, I just take an example, I have bought countless books about waste recycling and each one contains an enormous amount of pieces of advice, rules to follow, etc. I haven't had the time to read all these books because I read uh, books which are not necessarily, well, actually, they are more interesting and maybe more uh, important given the context, like the, the books about economics, but I have promoted and probably I will still promote books about waste recycling 
if you are not, uh, if you somehow you watch this and you are not uh, much inclined towards the complexities of Austrian economics or German metaphysics or uh, Anglo-Saxon sociology, etc., you can just buy a book about waste recycling and you can implement uh, some measures. It could take a few dozens of minutes each day, maybe uh, for the first few days or weeks, but it will. Uh, um, it will help you uh, simplify and uh, improve, etc., etc. I have been distributing um, this morning again uh, lots of books about some of the topics which are being discussed here. Uh, because uh, for, for people who precisely have understood this uh, over the past year, for people who are not used to reading, uh, just reading a practical book. Uh, about making supplies or re reducing the, the the amount of waste or eating a more healthy diet, etc. It can it can change their life slightly, but significantly nonetheless. Uh, if they if they find inspiration, etc. etc. Because here an another I, I briefly mentioned this earlier. One of the self-evident assumptions is that basically uh, knowledge is kind of good most of the time and, and uh, it can improve tremendously people's lives in the sense I'm just a classical scientist and I've, I've discovered uh, it was already implied uh, in my view but actually I'm just uh, I'm just a, li a classical liberal uh, I'm not just that because I have also the the romantic aspect, uh, what I say, but I'm just an, an, when I'm in a stable mood and when I'm growing and maturing, I'm, my ideal is just the ideal of the enlightenment. Uh, I believe in. Basically, here I will I will make a brief remark. Uh, a little bit controversial, but uh, actually my views they they change constantly, but there is. Uh, pervading coherence, one might say, but in a, in a certain sense, I'm 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 a, I'm a classical liberal of the 18th and 19th century, politically, economically, scientifically, ideologically, in a way. And my problem here, I just speak as a person, individual, is that in the modern world, because of the traumatic events of the Second World War, it is no longer possible to, to do science reasonably and in a sense, because I, I've received a book by Madison Grant today as well, uh, someone like Lothrop Stoddard, an American uh, journalist of the early 20th century, his views would be considered very controversial uh, today, but actually in the context of the early 20th century, he was a moderate person given the context of his time and he just advocated science and progress. But because there were new discoveries in biology, to apply biology, to, to apply modern science to biology, since humans are biological creatures, it, it had implications in terms of uh, his view on, on eugenics and it became very controversial because of the excesses of the Germans. But uh, A, a liberal society, which is actually mean today, the, the vocabulary would be a libertarian society, ought to be able and to be willing to intelligently discuss about all topics, not to censor, this is what America does, not to censor any uh, topic of discussion legally, but to eventually censor them morally when they are really excessive, but morally but not legally, Namely, to to, uh, to to but but the problem the problem it it, it has become s so excessive. For instance, eugenics ought to be to be in, in an intelligent, mature society. It ought to be discussed intelligently. So, in a sense, I would agree in the modern context with the radical right on this on this topic. Uh, if it's done intelligently, it ought to be promoted and debated publicly, that, that, that would imply a radical revolution uh, in mentality, 
uh, and I know it's not the case, but th th that's the ideal. An intelligent adult population, a libertarian society, ought to be willing and to be able to discuss all topics. With, with intelligent, moderate views, and uh, yeah, and, and Charles Murray, in this sense, his books they are really great because he he discusses really uh, uh, um, in, in most of his books he discusses controversial topics. Given the, the modern zeitgeist, leftist zeitgeist, he discusses controversial topics in a very intelligent, very moderate way. So he, he finds the perfect balance between um, being radical in, 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 an, in, the, in an intellectual way. For me, that's good. Radical, philosophically, means going to the root. So he's, he's radical in his views, which means uncompromising and and, 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 and authentic, so radical in this sense, is good. It's not extremist, precisely, that's, that's the opposite. He is radical because he discusses, he challenges uh, the belief of his time, but in an intelligent, moderate way. So he's politically incorrect while being intellectually correct and Civilly correct. He's politically incorrect because the current political system is is, is not uh, respectable morally. One might say so. He's politically incorrect without being civilly incorrect. So he, he remains civil while being politically challenging and 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 and, uh, and, and, and controversial, but in a good, intelligent sense. So that's why Charles Murray is really a, a role model, like Ron Paul and Thomas Sowell, um, they discuss different topics, but Charles Murray really, from, from a scientific perspective, uh, my, my favorite books are those of Charles Murray. Uh, yeah. Uh, because th this is really a treasure. It contains so much light and intelligence uh, in, in, in that, that this is such a, a revolutionary book for for someone who who has grown up in an intellectually decadent and uh, intellectually degenerate sometimes a country Th this is really a I, I just thought about a good joke uh, related to the t-shirt. Uh, if I talk to, to, uh, uh, to, 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 to America, I would say uh, I, I have, I, I, am, uh, I, am, I am poor and wealthy at the same time. I have few wants. I just want, uh, actually no, I, I want more than, than just America. I would like Germany as well. But, I could say to America, I just want America, so I have few wants, but actually that's dialectical because in America there's everything, everything good. <laughs> I, I just want a few things, but the few things that, that I want, they are so rich that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, America is very rich. Obviously, but but not here. That, that's my problem with uh, actually with, with a lot of people uh, in the modern world. They they do not see wealth as I do. They they do not. We, we don't have the same vision of wealth. For me, America is the most wealth. Here, that's true. In the modern world, that's by far the wealthiest country intellectually. Uh, yeah. And uh, very few people see this.
I'm some sort of a, a, a libertarian, uh, I wouldn't say aristocrat, but uh, maybe. And therefore, just uh, I'm kind of disconnected. Uh, in spite of my efforts to try to connect with the empirical people, and I do, and I keep making efforts, but I am disconnected nonetheless because uh, even even in when I forget my my German metaphysical views and I and I go to a lower level, which is still very high, uh, economics, uh, politics, etc., etc. Uh, even my views in these topics, which are more widespread than uh, the abstractions of the German metaphysician, it's still too high for a lot of people. <sighs> but uh, I still uh, will uh, try to, to to adapt for the good to, to, to the... Actually, yeah, here I make a remark. I've understood this recently, but I still do, but I've already talked about this. I, I am kind of disconnected from others, uh, even if we leave aside the, the religious, philosophical aspect, but just because... Um, I, uh, I, I, I can relate to people, but actually, here that's my autistic self. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will make a joke. I mean, it, it's, it's not a joke. Actually, it's a joke, but it's not really a joke. But I don't really care about economics. But if I do, and actually I do, it's not uh, the, the practical aspect. What I like about economics, these are good theoretical books about economics because they are interesting, they are uh, rigorous, they are systematic, well they are good, I mean it's it's pleasant to read, so for me the... <laughs> Here I will make a joke for, uh, for for the German metaphysicians if there are still German metaphysicians outside of myself a, a book like this in the mind of, of Pearl Biden, who is really very intelligent and very competent Thinking about the economy enables to, to, to produce better results economically. That, that the, the theory has to produce practical effects for the better, and I agree, and he is right. But my view is the opposite, namely, I am, I am not interested in the theoretical aspect of, economy, of, of economics for the sake of the economy. I'm interested in the economy because it enables to produce books like these, which are more interesting than most of what the economy produces. So, <laughs> yeah, formulated differently, the purpose of economics is not to produce uh, good results in the economy. My view is that the purpose of the economy, namely the daily interaction, the market, etc., is to produce good books about economics. <laughs> uh, and in this sense, I'm a complete alien. I mean, uh, there are few people on this planet who... Uh, people like Zizek, yeah. Who just and here I'm in a good mood, but who just enjoy reading good books, eventually on any to topic, if they are really good theoretically, intellectually, even if they don't really care. I don't really care about the economy as such, but this book is really great, and I enjoy understanding how the economy functions. Really, here in this sense, I'm really a a freak because uh, I I just love uh, understanding. Cl intellectual clarity, etc. That's really pleasant I, in itself. That's really the, the content, contemplative intellectual view. I just enjoy reading good books and, and thinking and, and understanding. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is
is why probably why my, my golden age for America is probably the 19th century uh, with uh, Emerson, uh, Thoreau, uh, Melville, etc. The transcendentalist uh, and then um, the, the romantics in a broader sense, like uh, Edgar Allan Poe and uh, Melville, and um, uh, etc., etc. But the transcendentalist uh, Emerson, uh, Walden by Thoreau, etc. This is an aspect of America, historically, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, and yeah, and the people who associate America with just business and making money, whether they are Americans or not, they have such a poor view, uh, such a poor, in a sense, uh, so limited. Well, so now my documents. Okay, about uh, housing. For the, the younger generation, uh, buying a tiny house, that's a possibility and that's a, a prospect, an interesting prospect. Finding a wife. I talked about males and female relationship in the previous video about home economics. If there were more married couples and earlier, and if this, the relationship between the gender were stabilized and fixed, uh, the, the housing market would be significantly changed because uh, there would be more stable households. Well, stopping mass immigration, obviously. Uh, wearing clothes inside the, the, the household, it it's, uh, reduces the amount of uh, heating. Uh, encouraging communication with the neighbors. I've been doing this. Uh, no borrowing. Here, that's really specific to the current uh, economic situation in the West. Uh, not boring, not getting into debt to buy a household, because if you do, if you are indebted for uh, 25 years or more, uh, you are kind of a slave to the system, as they call this, so you lose your, your kind of freedom, and plus the, the, the interest rates uh, are kind of, of, of artificially manipulated, it creates uh, booms and bust cycles, etc., etc. And here, I would say something politically incorrect, but the, 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 the 2008 uh, financial crisis, it cannot be analyzed only through the medium of, um, of, of, of finance or economics. Uh, the fact that uh, the, a lot of loans were granted to uh, poor households, which usually meant people with lower IQ, uh, the, the sociological and even sociobiological aspect has to be taken into account uh, for, for ev to interpret every social phenomenon, but uh, yeah, that's just an, an example. And the Fed, obviously, defund the welfare state, which has to bring about a radical change in uh, community organizing and, and, and gender relations. Uh, transportation, travel on foot or ride a bike as often as possible, buy local. If you buy local for ecological reasons, or practical reasons, you will economize uh, oil, less expenses of car insurance, less car accidents, etc., etc., and make stay-at-home moms uh, trendy again. Uh, also, if you walk on foot uh, more often or ride the bike, you will lose weight and be in a better health. Yeah, these are some of the ideas. But uh, Edward Dutton made a video about the problem of the housing market due to the demographics. Uh, if I find um, the link, uh, I will put the link to the video by Mr. Dutton about the, 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 the topic. Because everything is interconnected uh, socially, so yeah. Then about education and training. Uh, well, practice ethics. This is what I've been trying to do. Study logic. I did this for a significant amount of time in my life <laughs> and in the year 2022. Study encyclopedically. Uh, this is the, the purpose and the interest of my documents about nature and, and guys that I will show later because I've noticed that I haven't shared them yet. Homeschool your children. 
uh, read good books and read them well. I intend to produce a video about the book, how to read a book, uh, to encourage people and to, to share my, my, my pieces of advice about how to read well. And I share most of the time good books, watch good videos and take notes when you watch good videos because here people, and I've noticed this, they live in an age of mass consumption. They think that everything is to be to be consumed for entertainment so they are used to to stumbling upon a content watching for a few minutes and then they they uh, shift to something else but when genuinely good videos are found and there are a lot on the internet taking the time to study as if it was a lecture and it actually is the case it can help because here i make a remark but truth does not get old in a way and for instance there are lectures by hans Hermann hopper uh, from the 1990s or the 1980s about uh, statism or uh, socialism. Maybe I will put the link as well. And of course, the singular case has changed, uh, but the particular remains true. Uh, namely, the, the, the problem they are recurring and the solutions as well in terms of economics with socialism, etc. So good, good content, good videos, uh, good books, uh, good ideas, they do not get old. Uh, that's why they are worth studying if they are genuinely interesting. Yeah, list, share, good ideas, good authors, good links. That's what I've been doing consistently and what I will continue to do. Uh, defend public schools. Do not get into debt. Resist idiocracy. And about entertainment. Well, my view of entertainment. Uh, read good books. So my my job and my entertainment in a way. When when I read books for the purpose of work. They are kind of the same. So work is entertaining, and entertainment is uh, demanding in a way, and, and it, it, it requires effort. Uh, walk in the forest, study the heavens. Uh, I've bought the classics about Copernicus, Galileo, etc., etc. Sometimes just sitting outside with a telescope and watching the night sky can be. Very interesting. I haven't had the opportunity to do this yet, but I bought a telescope and maybe at some moment I will just take the time to look at the, the celestial bodies and yeah. Buy and study the classics of the Western tradition or any tradition, but in my case that's the Western tradition. Uh, and no partying, no watching TV, no alcohol, less social media. If it's for the purpose of entertainment, if it's for the purpose of education, if you have the time, the opportunity, uh, you can watch as much as you want if it helps you and makes you smarter and better, etc. And no professional ball games. Yeah. About social skills, here my singular case is tied with my autism. I struggle for psychological reasons. I have tried to improve my social skills to adapt to others, not to please them, but simply to become more responsible. But that's the problem of um, making compromises without compromising. So how do you find the balance between obeying a certain set of principles while adapting to others when your principles might bring excesses for others, so how do you find the proper balance in your relationship with others, uh, in your interactions? That's very difficult. Uh, yeah, I, I, sh I, I show tolerance for neurotypical people. Uh, yeah, I wrote no public talk for women and children without the consent of the authority figure. Here, because when women talk about politics, they just repeat whatever the figure of authority that they respect says. So women only, they, they are dependent on the figure of authority which controls their mind, not consciously, but they just repeat whatever the, 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 the leader says. They are very easily influenced. That's why uh, if, if, if you are a father of, 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 of a daughter or the husband of a wife, do, do not let your woman talk publicly because she, she is not responsible and, and women, they, they will um, easily deny what they said and they will easily shift their mind and 
if if their their authority figure is kind of controversial and if they repeat what uh, the the controversial authority figure said, they will not defend their ideas. They will say uh, they will find all sorts of excuses. So women are not supposed to talk about controversial topics in public, and and sometimes if they are easily influenced or not mature, they, they should not even talk at all without the, 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 the explicit consent of, of uh, the authority figure. Uh, yeah. About the bureaucracy, uh, reduce dependency, get rid of the bullshit jobs. And here's a good joke. I steal from the rich and I give to the poor, like Robin Hood. Actually, I do not steal, but I, I receive a insurance pension that I have earned by uh, promoting uh, the experimental aspect of a scientific uh, philosophical inquiry. Yeah, but I, I steal from the rich and I give to the poor. But what is comical is that the rich, these are the French socialists, and the poor, these are the American libertarians. This is when I distribute money but through donations to the Mises Institute, to, to the Ron Paul Institute. Uh, this is money which belongs to me, actually, but it is distributed through, I think, an insurance policy or a social uh, distributive system. Uh, so it's not illegal, but simply I, I, I take money from the rich to give to the poor. So here yeah, that's just Robin Hood. But what is comical is that the poor in the modern world, these are the American libertarians, because the Mises Institute, they are very rich in ideas but very poor in, in support because they do not have a lot of support, although they speak the truth. So I try to bring balance by, I have sent probably thousands of dollars uh, over the month in various donations to either Ron Paul or the Mises Institute uh, together. Uh, and I will continue to do so as long as I can or as long as I have to. Uh, yeah, and I encourage you to do so, really, Mises Institute, Ron Paul or Free Domain Radio by Stephen Molyneux. They, they speak really intelligently. And about information and the media, uh, I read briefly the news daily. I try to recontextualize the informations. Now I will show later the documents about Objective Guys to illustrate and make empiricism great again. Uh, and here I will show a couple of books. Uh, <laughs> Make empiricism great again. I have started using uh, two books, but they, these can be other books. But when you share or you use information, a good piece of advice would be to recontextualize chronologically. I'm not promoting necessarily this book, but simply a person with knowledge ought to be able to recontextualize chronologically what he or she is talking about, what he is talking about, uh, in, the, in the broadest perspective, because we live in an age of instant gratification. It's partly tied to the economic policy. I've read a chapter, uh, one of the latest chapters uh, this morning. Uh, he talks about the reason why a lot of people they live in the now and have lost uh, the ability to project into the future. So one of the consequences is that uh, in terms of culture, people, they think uh, with a very short time span. So sometimes to recontextualize uh, events within the historical process, it helps clarify and, and make it more intelligent. And a book that I've been using a lot. I will not talk about this in this video because I intend to make a video on journalism. This book is really very useful because, again, when people talk, um, when people talk about any country, here that's that's a little bit of <laughs> metaphysics, but actually no. But when people talk they use words, and words are supposed to express ideas, denk bestimmungen, but if, the, if it's not rigorously defined, there can be a lot of confusion. And here, the, the utility of a book like this, which is not complete, it has to be uh, actualized and, and uh, improved, but um, is to, to, to give empirical backup to the abstraction. So, for instance, when people talk about uh, uh, 
Japan or uh, Poland or America uh, or Brazil, etc., they have representation in mind. And when I've talked about America earlier, I, I have illustrated with my view of what political America ought to be. Ron Paul, Charles Murray, Thomas Sowell uh, in the center, not them as individuals, but their ideas, uh, which are the, 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 the classical, which is the classical ideal of America. Yeah, but America in this case is not just an ideal. It, there, there is also empirical, uh, an empirical reality, and a book like this gives a lot of statistics in a more or less coherent and structured way for all countries eventually, and it's very useful. I will not talk too much in this video because I intend to make a video dedicated to this, but simply when people talk about, uh, about any society, uh, England, uh, no, let's print, uh, Burundi, Burundi, the African country, what do you mean when you talk about Burundi? You have to talk about the geography, the people, and the, the society, the economy, the government, etc., etc. And there are data and facts, uh, or about Moldova, or about uh, Portugal, or Romania, etc. And, and uh, I will not talk more but about this uh, longer but in this video, but uh, to, to, to support the abstractions of language by the empirical facts within reality to, to make empiricism great again, uh, that's really useful. And uh, now I will show the document that I've already shared many times, but it's always useful. It can always be useful. Here, that's a full, a full view of nature. This is not very rigorous and here I have to improve a lot, but I haven't had the time to, to study everything uh, with the same uh, amount of intellectual and cognitive investment. Mechanics, physics, uh, organic physics, that would be, uh, what it's called in ordinary language, physics, that would be chemistry in a way, although the two are connected, and that would be the, the life and earth sciences. Uh, yeah, that's the view. And now Geist, which is helpful for uh, sociological analysis and to contextualize. <laughs> That's the, the logical um, encyclopedic view of, of a society.
and stupid view of the nature of the data of the CIA. They have to be recontextualized. Demographics. Uh, it has to be the IQ has to be added, etc., etc. Then the statistics of the economy. So here, that's the, the logical and encyclopedic way that I envision a society and home economics is a transition between practical tendencies and the larger society. Uh, it's kind of, it's not very rigorously, uh, formally, etc. But the bedrock would be home economics and family life, and then economics, sociology. Uh, morality and culture, which gives rise to law, legislation, order, politics, the state, the government, uh, etc. Et uh, yeah, that's the full view. I will not comment this because I've already done this. For me, that's a very useful tool to, to work because that's the view of the totality in, in the simplified categories of what a society is. and. Everything is interconnected, and uh, yeah, someone like Ron Paul is very intelligent because he understands that finance, economics, politics, uh, culture, and morality, and, and law are connected and interconnected. He, he, that's why usually here I will make a brief remark. Usually people, intellectuals or intelligent people, even though they are not necessarily intellectuals as such, just by not being not being special, not being specialists, not not being a specialist can be very, uh, I wouldn't say useful, but very advantageous because specialists, in, in from an epistemological standpoint, they suffer from m m my myopia, namely they are focused on their tiny subject and they can be expert in their very limited subject with a limited scope, but they, they, they miss the, the full view because they spend their entire career sometimes focusing on one aspect and someone like Ron Paul is a, a surgeon I think or a, a physician as, as, a, as a profession uh, his job uh, his, 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 his uh, training made him a physician but he's such an intelligent person I wouldn't say an intellectual as such, but a, a public intellectual figure and he's so, so in, intelligent because he, he, he considers a lot of aspects and he interprets economic tendencies and, 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 and political and legislative and geopolitical and, and finance, uh, the aspect of finance, etc. Through, through the lens of, of, of morality and from all the aspects. Yeah. And Charles Murray, the bell curve simply consists in interpreting economic so sociological and social outcomes through the lens of IQ. So uh, Charles Murray makes the connection between IQ and intelligence and a lot of social phenomena, which is actually the case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I will take another glass of water.
I'm a little bit exhausted. But uh, I still have a document to comment and books to promote. topics but now there's a, another document about civic society the trash daily uh, for a few dozens of minutes I have practiced this consistently and constantly uh, it, it enables to clean the streets and to have a good uh, social reputation so that's good I've been distributing organic food stamps with a good book for months I've been distributing food stamps for really a lot of, for many months but with a good book so I've, I've done started doing this for a few months now and it has been kind of successful uh, I wrote a good books about ecology libertarianism or science uh, I have sometimes tried to give work to homeless people in exchange for a food stamp not in exchange for money I have done this very often but it hasn't been very successful uh, the problem of homeless people it can be cured on a, on a singular level by a little bit of uh, initiatives like this but actually this is structural uh, so I, I haven't had a lot of success uh, with this attempt because usually these are people who really have been suffering for a long time and uh, they are not uh, in, in a state to, to in a state of mind to it, 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 it requires much 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 more than just uh, giving them a, a, a piece of a, I mean it, it, I have had positive results uh, I've been helped by by a, a few persons but it, it's not uh, enough to do this uh, on a singular level so yeah but I have done this nonetheless uh, I given away good books and I continue to do so. I've distributed ecological products. Uh, I participate in local charities. And from the point of view of global citizenship, my way of being a, glo a good global citizen precisely consists in sending money to the Ron Paul Institute, the Mrs. Institute, Free Domain Radio, that's the, the website, uh, I think, by um, Stephen Morin. I did this once. But I, I have favored the Doron Paul Institute and the Mises Institute, but uh, these are examples of libertarian uh, websites. And uh, yeah, uh, I finance great content creators on, on YouTube. I promote right wing minorities. That's, that's the, the, the unity of the, the modern ideology of the left is to promote minorities. The, the reaction is to, pro to promote right-wing politics and the unity of both is to promote right-wing minorities. Uh, I will continue to do so. I have consistently promoted intelligent uh, Jewish and, and, and black uh, intellectuals in the case of Mr. Thomas Sowell and, and people like Rothbard or Mises. Uh, there are many others, but uh, or intelligent uh, women. Uh, but I have distributed a lot of books by uh, Jewish intellectuals that I respect and that I admire. And uh, that's really the, 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 the truth, the, the political truth of modernity in the West, namely to promote right-wing minorities. That's the proof uh, to the left that the right-wing can be 
can be not can 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 be non-racist while still being right wing. So that's really the 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 the, the best option. It's to prove that right wing ideas in the modern world are true because they can be adopted and adapted by everyone potentially. There are right wing Jews for the good, right wing blacks, right wing women, right wing gay people, right wing Hispanics, right wing Asians, and right wing Muslims within the context of the modern West, namely people who independently of their origin or background can nonetheless defend and promote the best ideas and, and the most universal ideas of the modern Western world. I have never voted. I don't believe in a politician politics. Uh, I do not participate in politics. Uh, defend the, the politicians, defend the media, defend the scholars and the teachers, because these people are not supposed to leave off the taxpayers' money in a libertarian society there would be no politicians or they would have no financial uh, gain, uh, any significant financial gain. The media are not supposed to earn a single penny from the state. And the scholars and the teachers, they, they are ideally they're not supposed to, to be on the paycheck of the state. Otherwise, they become proponent unconsciously or consciously of state supremacy, as uh, Murray Rothbard would say. Uh, scholars and teachers, they ought to be independent in a private law society, there will be competition between schools, between teachers, for the better of good of the consumer, and the same, the, the media, they should be in competition to speak the truth and not be on the paycheck of the government. Defend the military, defend the secret services, and defend the welfare state. And what I've been doing is, uh, I work for free, so I have no income, so I try to, to, to pay the least amount of taxes, but there are taxes on Cigarettes, uh, I don't drink cigarettes, but cigarettes, alcohol, etc. That's the books, these are the books that I showed earlier. But uh, the, 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 the destructive social institutions, the media, the academia, the school, the political parties, the military, the welfare state, the secret services, they have to be defunded uh, because they, they bring destruction in a way. Uh, social destructionism. And here, how to make the economy great again? Well, first, I study uh, theoretically uh, accessible good books. I've started reading this book, but it's much more voluminous. But if I have the opportunity, I will study more thoroughly as well. As well, I've started reading these books as well. But Per Byland, in my view, it contains the greatest amount of enlightenment in the shortest uh, amount of space, one might say. So I've been studying Per Byland or watching uh, lectures by Hans Simon Hopper. My view would be deregulate the economy, regulate your behavior, abolish minimum wage laws, that's a logical uh, consequence of the deregulation, uh, protestant work ethic. I have been working uh, almost every waking hour of, of every day for 14 months and I will continue to do so, but work for me, it consists in doing all the aforementioned steps. Yeah. Uh, I've taken a few days, one might say, of rest to read books, yeah, but uh, overall, since I've started working, I've worked very hard, very intensely, and I intend to continue to do so, yeah, but I take time to rest when I'm really exhausted, but otherwise, my purpose, my dedication, and my focus is entirely on work. I've made lectures for free, and I will continue to do so uh, as long as I can, as long as I have to. Uh, an another idea, which is derived from the bell curve, uh, I mean, it's not an idea pro proposed by the bell curve, but this, once someone reads this book and understands that it's a great book, one of the consequences is that uh, uh, employers, companies, bo bosses ought to, to be allowed to hire whoever they want on whatever criteria they, they, they seem they, they judge fit, and I know that there are laws in the US, I think from 1971, which forbid and prevents employee, employers to hire employees based on IQ tests because of fear of discrimination, but employees, they are discriminated nonetheless because the, the, the most intelligent rise to the top in efficient companies, so that's just kind of a social hypocrisy. A, a, a business owner ought to be allowed in a, in a free and libertarian society to hire anyone he 
uh, wants, uh, if he thinks that it's in the best interest of the company, and if employees in any country were hired based on their IQ, because IQ has been shown in many studies to be the most um, reliable uh, indicator um, sign, the most reliable sign of job productivity, if any company started hiring legally uh, employees based on IQ, this company would outcompete all others in the long term because it would promote the best people for the best position. And, uh, yeah, and any country who pr practiced meritocracy based on IQ selection, if there are other psychological dispositions, of course, there has to be the talent, the motivation, the training, etc. But IQ is the best predictor. So if uh, uh, employers are prevented from hiring based on IQ, this, 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 this disrupt, disrupts the economy. So it has to go away uh, with all parasitical uh, regulations. Uh, organize and systematize knowledge. This is what I've been doing. Uh, get rid of the bullshit jobs. There are a lot of bullshit jobs uh, here. Uh, establish a liberty and order. my view about uh, <laughs> politics and economics in a way. Yeah. And now I will conclude by um, sharing share uh, all the books uh, about all the topics because I've done this already uh, two or three times and here it's been uh, two hours and a half the first three videos they are three hour long usually books about education and uh, information uh, yeah received this book recently uh, it's in favor of manual labor the fulfilling aspect Ivan Illich a Jewish uh, intellectual about fake uh, work in a way go ghost job or ghost work I don't know how it's translated in English Job by Mr. Greber, The Utopia of Rules. Here, a book about the negative uh, genetic consequences of the welfare state by Mr. Adam Perkins. In the singular case of England, as far as I know, uh, but actually it's, it can be applied to 
every Western country or every country with a welfare state. In our hands, our plan to replace the welfare state, a plan to replace the welfare state and bureaucracy by Mises. Yeah, so that's about bullshit jobs. Let's make a joke. <laughs> How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make the credibility of the Western educational system disappear. First, the, the American educational system. I'm promoting homeschooling with, uh, by promoting these books. UPS There are right-wing criticism, left-wing criticism, liberal criticism, libertarian criticism, conservative criticism uh, Yeah Now, UPS. That's the French singularity. That is Monsieur Nemo, the libertarians. Uh, I, I've, I've discovered that libertarians really they consistently write good books, even very old books or newly released books. The libertarians usually they, they, they consistently write good books. I don't know why, actually I do, but uh, yeah. If you want to write good books, uh, become a libertarian. That, that, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but uh, there's, there's a, a strong correlation between uh, intelligence and uh, inclinations toward libertarian ideals. Yeah, it's not over yet, so yeah. The, the credibility uh, of the American educational system, uh, ta-da, it's gone. The, the credibility of the French educational system, it's gone as well. But because here, that's just empiricism. Um, and here, that's the useful aspect of a, a just logic and a document like this. Through my, my supernatural uh, faculties of deduction, I, I was able to deduce because of UPS, and I knew that the American educational system uh, is kind of a mess, and the French as well. And I can deduce that because the particularity here is both Western and, and socialized education, I can deduce that it's the case in England as well. That's how I found this book. I can deduce that it's the case in Australia as well, so that's how I found this book. <laughs> uh, I, I knew empirically that it was the case in Germany, so 
I knew it was the case, yeah. And I haven't taken the time to search for Scotland. I mean, I have actually uh, for New Zealand, but here, uh, here an empirical person, which is not a native speaking person, I cannot know who, uh, I cannot easily distinguish without thorough research by just the cover of a book, whether it's New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Scotland, Ireland, England, etc. Uh, yeah, so here, these are my empirical limitations. So yeah, but, but UPS, if you know that one singular is, is kind of flawed and that the particular to which it belongs, whether it's Western or socialist or both, you can deduce that all the other singulars suffer from the same problem. I can deduce that there are problems in the Spanish, Italian, Belgian, Swedish educational system, but I do not speak Spanish, nor Italian, nor Swedish. Uh, so yeah, I, here I only took German, French and English speaking books, but I know that it can logically be deduced that for the very structure of, of an educational system which is socialized and heavily socialized and ideologically bended towards epistemological nonsense or, or economic destructionism or scientific falsification, the consequences on the longer term will be the dumping down of the, of the population. So it happens in every Western country, but here I've taken many examples. And here it's more general, as far as I know. Uh, it starts probably from a singular case, but it talks about the education at large. I think that's a libertarian book, at least it was recommended by uh, someone at the Mises Institute, as far as I know. Here it's a criticism, but I think it's a left-wing person, but I, I, I haven't read all of these books, obviously. Not any of them, almost, actually. Uh, but uh, here he's a radical leftist, but an intelligent one. He advocates a society without school. And here, Murray Rothbard, edu edu Education Free and Compulsory. I have been distributing this book in the French translation several times, uh, and I encourage you to do so in whatever language. Uh, because here that's education as statist, as a statist institution, so it's valid for all socialized educational system. Yeah. Ta-da! It's gone. The credibility of the educational system, with the advent of the internet, the possibility of accessing free lectures, the totality of world knowledge, at some moment, the educational system, in every Western country and eventually in the world at large, will, will vanish because the, 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 the empirical the destructive aspect in terms of intellect and, and culture uh, are, are, are noticed daily, one might say, but the theoretical reason, there, there is first the problem of the war on the West by, by Westerners themselves, but also from a strictly economic standpoint, Mr. Di Lorenzo in the book uh, The Problem with Socialism. Uh, maybe I will put the links uh, to videos about problem of higher education or the problem of a socialized educational system, he explained that because for the very structure there is no competition, it's a monopolistic control of education, so it, it tends to increase the price and to lower the quality uh, than in a competitive system, a competitive market where several private schools would be able to compete for the best students, have to hire the, the teachers at the best price, etc. that would be the better, because here at this point, uh, be, being going through the educational system, it's kind of it has kind of become detrimental. Uh, maybe, maybe at some moment, I will be the the, the leading proof that uh, not having an education makes you smarter than going through the educational system. Uh, a fucking dropout that quits, uh, stupid as shit, rich as fuck and proud of it, as Eminem says in the song uh, Revelation with D12. Uh, maybe at some moment I, I will belong uh, to the list of the high school dropout uh, who end up uh, succeeding uh, in, in their intellectual endeavors uh, nonetheless. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that was for the educational system. And the media, I could show the books, but uh, there are so many which denounce the problem of the media and uh, 
information, but I intend to make a video specifically dedicated to this. Uh, now I will just show a few libertarian books. To conclude, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I will probably stop the video here. Uh, I will not post uh, the videos about home economics uh, in, in the, the, the short uh, term. I have to rewatch them to, to put the structure and probably, so now that there will be uh, four videos about the brief commentary of the structure. Uh, maybe I will make a short introduction to the series and maybe I will add a, a document with my empirical writings or with uh, my, my uh, space organization, depending on... Uh, first I will rewatch the video and uh, the videos and uh, put the structure and then depending on um, on the views, but yeah, I have promoted home economic. It can still be, and it has to be greatly improved. The purpose is to follow most of the rules of conduct as consistently as possible. Uh, yeah, but uh, um, yeah. I still have a, a lot of work to do and I have a lot of content to produce that uh, I intend to produce that I know can be really good and really helpful. But I think about the videos about home economics, except maybe a brief introduction uh, set apart once I have rewatched all the videos and uh, yeah, and uh, uh, an appendix as they call this, an, an added document with my own empirical, for instance, I list not consistently but regularly my expenses, my meals, my sleeping schedule, uh, these kind of things to, to keep track and to structure. It can be helpful or maybe my um, uh, some aspects of, of my uh, room organizing, De depending on uh, my ability uh, to, to order my uh, my immediate environment, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I have shared most of my good ideas about home economics. Uh, this is my contribution. I will keep this document, and probably I will keep improving this document if it can help someone other than myself. That would be really good. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit exhausted and uh, I will keep practicing my daily routine uh, because uh, it, it really helps me to stabilize myself. It has really done me a whole lot of good. Uh, yeah, so...
I will conclude with a book which has, I mean, not a book, but a, a views and ideas which have inspired me a lot over the past, uh, the past uh, months. Now I will, uh, I will go to sleep and then I will keep working uh, as long as I can, as long as I have to. Uh, yeah. I work for free, but also I work for freedom. <laughs> I already made this joke, but uh, it's really a good joke. It's not a joke, it's a, it's a, a comical uh, pun, it's a pun, yeah. It's really good. <laughs>